good afternoon good afternoon and very good afternoon welcome to the show welcome to biography i uh, i was out for a very long time for some months actually not for days or weeks actually for for some months i was completely out you know was not taking any videos because i was trying to take care of some domestic uh, uh, not issues there's some domestic concerns at my end so i was completely out but now i'm back and i'm trying to keep up with you guys all right so all right so let's talk about what's today videos you know going to be well by far uh, from the title of the video you already know what i'm going to talk uh, it's about this lens this is nikon 135 mm f 1.8 planner yep that's planner 135 1.8 s line lens but before i talk uh, particularly about this lens let me talk a little bit about that 135 mm uh, focal lens that one has it see when we talk about portraits we usually go for 85 mm 50 mm or some people go to 105 mm or you basically move around 70 to 200 but it's very less like very few people try to stick with 135 especially prime especially prime like and that uh, there are many companies who made uh, uh, 135 prime of course Nikon, Canon, Sony, Sigma, Samyang and Carl Zeiss they all made 135 millimeter prime and some of them made f2 like Nikon, Canon Carl Zeiss, they made F2 and Sony and Sigma, even Sammy and made F2, only Sony and Sigma they made F1.8 prime. Uh, the difference between F1.8 and F2 is very negligible, like on paper, kind of a big deal for some company, but in reality, the difference is very negligible, very, very negligible. So you can't find any difference, like some very heavy difference between. F1.8 and F2 is just one third of a stop. It's not much. All right. So that being said, what's so special about that planner? See, I, I used to have own uh, F2, the F mount, 135 meter F2 DC, you know, defocus control uh, from uh, Nikon. Uh, I used it for a very long time and then I sold it. It because I found a very good alternative of that f2 dc even though the f2 dc had the unique feature of controlling the foreground blur and the background uh, blur you know not the blur it's called out of focus area so like foreground out of uh, foreground focus and the background focus independently that was the feature of uh, that 135 f2 dc from nikon it nikon uh, already had the pattern for that lens but what about this planner what planner is all about you know before I, I put that planner and these, let me share with you its competitor. Because I literally put this 135mm, you know, f1.8 side by side with this. This is Carl Zeiss 135mm f2 APO sonar. Yep, so this is Carl Zeiss. 135mm F2 APO Sonar. Sonar is the design uh, uh, category from uh, Carl Zeiss. So they, here they are. Uh, the Carl Zeiss uh, 135F2 and this is uh, an icon plan. As you can see, the Carl Zeiss with the FTC adopter is literally, you know, uh, uh, almost equal in size and they are nearly identical, uh, nearly equal in weight which I'm going to tell you in a minute. Uh, uh, the, this planner is thicker than Carl Zeiss, as you can see. And of course, it, it, it because of the lens design. Okay. I'm going to put some specs some right over here, uh, comparing these and uh, side by side, which you will notice in a minute. Just a second. All right. So here we go. So first of all, I'm just putting some notes in front of me before I forget. Uh, 
planner. What planner means? Planner means full. It's a Latin word. It means full. Full means fulfillment, like fulfillment of creativity or happiness or whatever. So that's planner means. Now, uh, what's this? Uh, this uh, Carl Zeiss, APO sonar. No, sonar uh, means, it's a German word. It means sun. Sun means sun. Okay? So that, that's what uh, sonar means. Uh, the sonar, the current value of sonar, if I have 135 from Carl Zeiss, 135 to sonar, it's between $850 to $950. Okay. Uh, Plana is uh, 2.5K, is $2,500. Now, why PO sonar is, uh, of course, it's, uh, it's an old lens and it's a manual focus lens. Yeah. That's, uh, this APO sonar is a manual focus lens. It's not autofocus. The planner is autofocus. Big difference. Um, the weight of sonar is 930 grams. Where is a planner is uh, 995. It's literally like 5 grams lighter in word kilo. So it's 995 grams. Uh, sonar was released in September 2012. Where is planner was released in September 2023. So it's literally like 11 years of difference. Okay. Uh, sonar got 11 elements in 8 groups. And Plana got 16 elements in 14 groups. Okay. So that's it. So that's the load. Now, why I choose Plana versus Sonar? First of all, I own Sonar. So that's why I put Sonar. People ask me to put Canon 135 F2 uh, L lens uh, in compared to Plana, which uh, of course I'm not able to gather it, uh, not able to arrange it. But I saw the sample shots of uh, 135 F2 L lens from Canon, and uh, this uh, this guy Zeiss literally beat that 135 F2 by miles. So I don't see. Uh, putting uh, Canon uh, into this mix. So this this size is already one of the best It it carries the legacy or uh, you know that DNA of Otis the very famous Carl Zeiss Otis lens which is very sharp, you know throughout corner to corner. So that Carl Zeiss That uh, 135 F2 APO Sona literally carry that legacy, that design, that sharpness, that con everything that you think, very, very less chromatic vibration and all that into this, you know, in this. So, uh, this already beat the Canon and the rest of the competitor out there. So, that's why I put this with Planner. Now, let's talk about Planner because this video is all about Planner. First of all, it's big. <laughs> this lens is big. It's called uh, one function button, you know, over here, another button over here, and it's got just one, one uh, uh, button for autofocus and manual focus. Um, the very first thing you, I noticed about this lens is even at 1.8, there is no, you know, vignetting at the corner. There is no vignetting very very less why because it got this very big this uh, rear element so basically it's so big that it covers you know most part of the uh, the most of the bright part up to the corners of the full frame digital sensor so that's why there is very less creative very less vignetting now the first thing that you noticed after reading, you know, after vignetting, uh, the first thing was reading, and the second thing is sharpness. It's very smart, you know, you know, we usually call it sharp, we call it very sharp, extra sharp. This lens is brutally sharp, and it comes with auto focus. It's brutally sharp, and from this corner to literally this corner. To this corner, to this corner, this lens is sharp across the board. No matter wherever you focus, 
like literally. When I was pushing that plan out with sonar side by side, I I'm going to show you sample images of these both lenses, you know, uh, shortly uh, on the Lightroom, and I'm telling you, even though this lens is 11 year old, but the sharpness of that that this lens, which equal to I'm saying literally almost equal to Otis quality, was almost keeping up with Plana. Plana really having you know had a hard time with this sonar this the sonar is really sharp but the problem with sonar is uh vignetting very heavy vignetting at f2 even though this was having very less vignetting at 1.8 at f2 whatever the vignetting so-called vignetting was visible it's gone at f2 in this it was very much visible too much so that's the first drawback which goes to open source. Advantage goes to Plana. Now the second thing, uh, when it comes to sharpness, Plana got hard time with the Otis. Otis really gave hard time to Plana because when I was focusing at the corners with, with uh, Sona, I was thinking that okay, uh, Plana will win by miles because it's modern lens. It carries every new technology, every new coating and everything. But Sonar was really able to get very sharp result at the corner. Like if it's 100%, then the Sonar was like 95, literally 95. So it was getting very hard time, you know, and focusing. Yeah, it's a manual focus lens. So there were some areas where it was my fault. I was not able to fully focus uh, in some cases in the corner. So. Uh, the error goes on my side, but it has nothing to do with the lens. Lens was really, really, really good. Now, the third thing which I noticed, despite this having 16 glass elements and this having 11 glass elements, yeah, 11 it was, yeah. This was having, you know, it uh, it was pushing the light less. Like, what do you mean? What do I mean by less? Less means you know when you have too much light here yeah, and you are in aperture priority your shutter speed automatically goes high because too much light was getting in okay when you are having less light your shutter speed goes down because the camera wants to enter more light okay so when i was in aperture priority trying to shoot both at the same aperture f2 size despite having less glass elements was having less light in it i'll tell you why and plana was getting more light more light so like for example if the shutter speed that i was getting on plana was 500 in aperture priority at f2 the sona was giving me 320 all right at f2 same scene same light okay so that's that was the issue now why why it was having a this issue because the problem uh, with uh, with the uh, sonar is uh, the Carl Zeiss basically design um, in order to uh, push all the uh, uh, red green and blue primary colors through the lens and they add uh, lead which is called PB I believe yeah PB uh, in Latin they mix the lead into the glass so what lead does when it mixed into the glass it basically try to slip in more blue uh, element into the from the white light uh, what happens is usually any glass any glass uh, people think that if it's it's a glass and so the light will pass through it no it's not uh, the red green blue when they try to three enter into the glass the glass always pushes the uh, blue element you know try to stop it and the red and green passes easily why the blue element stops because uh, the energy of the blue element according to this equation it's high so the higher the energy the higher the capacitance of the glass so it, with the less energy less the capacitance so red got the least capacitance which that's why it it uh, faces less 
uh, uh, you know uh, stopping power from the glass element and passes easily then green passes but the blue element is facing the most resistance from the glass um, in order to put because of the higher capacitance so in order to put that blue element passing just like red and green Carl Zeiss basically mixed the lead into the glass element which basically made uh, blue element slips through the through the glass but I believe it was not that much enough that's why still the light faced a lot of resistance from the glass maybe because of the glass design maybe because of the lead which basically helps the light to pass through but the contrast you know to be very honest when I was when I was putting these images put I when I was comparing them side by side Zeiss was always giving me high contrast always so the lens is basically carrying that that character because of the design that it was having too much contrast whereas planner no contrast it's very well distributed. You're probably thinking I'm talking too much about Carl Zeiss, but the thing is, I have to put comparison in order to tell you how special this lens is. Because whatever I'm seeing in sonar, I'm seeing completely opposite those things in in, in plan. You know, I, despite having more glass elements, 16 in compared to 11. The light was passing through more easily on planar, more easily. Now let's talk about bokeh, because that's where anybody you know wants to see the bokeh. This having uh, uh, eleven aperture blades, uh, sonar was having nine aperture blades. Uh, sonar, the in the center of the frame, the sonar was having circular bokeh, but as I start moving towards the edges the bokeh becomes cat eye but sonar uh, sorry planar the planar was carrying equal round aperture like bokeh balls across the frame across the frame no matter where the subject is the bokeh that you get from planar is always circular always circular so that's one of the best attribute I, uh, I must say by the way um, sorry, I forget to mention in the beginning, but uh, thanks to Naked Middle East uh, for letting me, uh, you know, play with that uh, with Planner. Uh, they always help me in uh, evaluating the gears and orders. They always help me uh, to make these reviews possible for you guys uh, by letting me, you know, all the gears and lenses, uh, and I use them uh, in the way I do, and come up with these videos for you guys to help you. Uh, to decide what's the best gear for you. So thank you, Nike Money List, for uh, for the trust and and all this care throughout the years. Thank you. So that being said, by the way, I'm uh, going to put sample images in the middle. You're probably going to see uh, uh, in the middle as I keep talking to you guys. Uh, of course, it has this function ring, the focus ring. I disable this function ring because for me. I don't use it, uh, but the overall optical performance of Plana is just amazing. Like I was shooting on uh, ZF, not even Z9 or Z8 or the newly announced Z63. Uh, I'm just uh, using on ZF, and it, that lens never bothered me at all. The autofocus the tracking of this lens is really amazing uh, I was shooting back to back like five tuck 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 uh, even I shot some bulk photography using this lens and I was able to get almost every single uh, uh, image in focus so the autofocus tracking the, the focus element and the tracking of this lens is really amazing just like high end tele zooms that you can expect uh, the colors well balanced the contrast it's well balanced the sharpness it's amazing literally amazing and uh, I, I don't know I, I have not much to say because this focal length it's 135 is not for everybody 
it's 2000 nearly 2500 dollar lens so i don't think so uh, only a people with you know who come up with creativity every single time you know can can going to use this lens but for general people it will be very hard because 135 is a mm, you know longer focal length so you have to go back up a lot in order to take full body shot or half body shot i was shooting models i have full body shot and i was quite a distance like 20 30 30 30 feet something like that maybe more i was very far from the model when i was shooting so it's it's very uh, difficult to manage by any normal people all right but for professionals this lens it carries all the attribute uh, it has this uh, construction is you know well built but not like sonar sonar is all metal is lit you see even lens hood is all metal this other than uh, this uh, that plasticky uh, lens cap which is very bad in quality but uh, sonar it's all metal the <laughs> the lens barrel you know and the lens hood you see it's all metal so when it comes to construction quality sonar wins by mile when it comes to planner uh, but uh, this this it's very you know rubbery very cushiony so despite you will if you get bumps it will save your lens so this lens cap is uh, just like the high-end tele zooms the construction quality of this it's very much metal so yeah it's nearly professional grade in my opinion i could be wrong but it is in just my humble opinion because i am comparing it with this metal all metal so that's where the sonar wins and the overall overall protection sonar wins uh, it has this uh, gasket so yep it's weather sealed but this big see this how big the glass element rear is so that that this is basically the main reason you are going to have very less chromatic abrasion not chromatic abrasion i mean vignette not the chromatic vignette and uh, let's talk about chromatic abrasion i haven't seen any zero literally zero chromatic abrasion in this lens nikon really made this lens so special in so many ways that you know once you once you design a lens there is always a compromise always a compromise so but when i'm checking the attributes and have uh, things related to uh, evaluate any lens i don't see anything which lacking it carries the sharpness across the board corners every single corner it uh, has the like very uh, minimum contrast well balanced contrast in compared to sonar uh, which you will see in a minute in the video and then the construction is professional grade sharpness uh, what else i have i can say about this lens the colors very well balanced very well balanced like if it depends on your picture profile but i found very well balanced so i don't see anything you know uh, chromatic abrasion zero literally zero i literally went all the way to 300 percent and at one time try to see it's so so minimal that you really hard you have to push yourself in order to capture the chromatic abrasion this lens is so well designed you know i used the 135 f to dc and i can i'm telling you that lens will you know having all their special character of dc functionality defocus control 
functionality but it was having very heavy uh, chromatic abrasion this is least very minimum almost less than i don't know half percent is we have to really zoom in all the way so the overall construction the overall the character of the lens it's so perfect it's near perfect that i can tell you that if you want to have a lens for portrait or general landscape photography go for this lens and you won't get disappointed it's very hard for me you know to get impressed like the way i impressed with uh, 51.2 i don't like 50 mm focal length much but that 51.2 from nike was oh my god it made me fell in love with 1.2 with 50 mm to be very honest and then i used uh, 85 1.2 it was another engineering marvel but this this plana literally surpassed that benchmark that i had with 51.2 and 85 1.2 i'm telling you honestly it basically surpasses that and i was like okay that the results that i have was like wow it's the the results were really sharp really really sharp like in some cases i have to add clarity in a negative way to reduce the sharpness because it was too much for me i'm telling it was too much for me now why i'm uh, kept on you know comparing it with uh, sonar it's uh, the carl zeiss basically famous for making sharp lenses and lenses with a character and this uh, 135 f2 apo sonar you know is fitting that definition perfectly very very much I, I am glad I own it, but I wish uh, it has the autofocus because after using Plana, it I I I wish I you know have enough money right now to exchange this sonar with Plana. I I would have done right away because. he plana is really a special lens and i cannot put enough you know um i cannot find right words to tell you my feelings about this lens because when it comes to technical things i already explained you and uh, internet is full with youtube videos about plana the bokeh the contrast the shadow you know i don't have to explain it you already can find it on youtube and google it. but when it comes to character This lens is very special, very, very special. It made me start using the 135 focal length again. I wasn't using the 135 much uh, because um, first of all it's manual focus, so I'm I'm lazy, and uh, so that's one of the reasons probably. But now after using Plana, I'm thinking to. give it to someone to sell it and go for plana so if you are if you cannot afford plana then the size is the best connector you know you can go with the yes, ss manual focus lens but if you are shooting landscape you don't have to worry about it the focus you can put the camera on trap or take your time if you are shooting portrait yes this is where it's you have to be very much you know into my own focus thing and uh, to get the right focus mm. but with plana where all dreams comes to i mean one day i will i will buy this lens i am literally in love with this lens like really now okay so let's get back to the sample images of plana and um, you will see the side by side comparison of this lens with sonar let's go
all right so here we are going to have a comparison of uh, the 135 1.8 uh, planner from Nikon versus the uh, Carl Zeiss 135 f2 APU solar so these are the side-by-side -side comparison of the two lenses which I took on different uh, aperture mostly I shot uh, planner uh, 1.8 even at uh, f2 because the APO sonar from Carl Zeiss is f2 by default it cannot go 1.8 so in order to get the uh, right comparison uh, I narrowed down both uh, lenses to f2 and then uh, did all the testing so let's go and see the comparison side by side I'll try to put images on the left hand side uh, the uh, planner and on the right hand side I'll go with the uh, APO sonar so let's go uh, this one and this okay uh, let's go and compare okay these are uh, on my left hand side it's uh, planner at f2 on the right hand side it's sonar at uh, at uh, f2 uh, I put the focus on uh, uh, this Nikon logo as you can see all right on both by the way the first thing which you can clearly see that I have to the uh, this token or the APO sonar from Carl Zeiss is creating heavy vignette whereas uh, on Plana it's not much there is very less very minor uh, uh, vignetting that you can see at f2 um, so if I go let's go let's zoom 100% okay that's quite near uh, the autofocus area on the planner it's more than uh, uh, than APO sonar from Carl Zeiss Maybe the focus point is somewhere over there, but both are at f2. But plan is appears to be more these uh, this uh, the shutter release button on the left hand side, as you can see, is much more blur than uh, than this eyes. All right, so if I go at f4 on the left hand side, it's a planner at f4, on the right hand side, it's sonar from Carl Zeiss at f4. And as you can see, the sharpness, uh, it's actually nearly identical. It's very difficult to tell uh, which one is very much sharp. For me, it appears to be nearly equal, surprisingly. And now, both are at F8. Uh, on the left-hand side is planner. At f8 on the right hand side is sonar at f8 and um, it's at, now both are at f16 and as you can see they are nearly nearly identical by the way, if you see the shutter speed on plan is 2.5 seconds, ISO 100, F16 on the right hand side, uh, the APO sonar from Carl Zeiss is giving me 4 seconds. So why 4 seconds? The reason that I understood is that the light passing through the APO sonar is slow. That's why the shutter speed, because I shot this in aperture priority. So that's why the camera light meter basically uh, uh, on uh, the ZF because I took I, I used Nikon ZF for both of these settings. So uh, when I put the APO sonar, it took longer time uh, to get the right amount of exposure. That's why the shutter speed it appears to be uh, longer on APO sonar, whereas the last uh, light passes much faster on the, uh, on this planner surprisingly all right so let's go for next comparison all right so on the wait a second all 
Oh, okay. So on the left hand side is uh, 135 1.8 Plana at F11. On the right hand side is Carl Zeiss 135 F2 APO Sonar. Both are at F11. And as you can see, the sharpness at the edges. It's actually. The first thing that is the uh, the uh, plana is cooler, whereas the sonar is warmer. That's the first thing that you notice, and the vignetting is obviously visible on the on the uh, APO sonar. It's darker. The edges are far darker than uh, the plana. Plana is much more brighter. You will see this across all the examples, all the examples. So and also the planar images are more cooler rather than this uh, from Carl Zeiss which is warmer but at the edges the sharpness it's very equal it's literally very equal surprisingly so the APO sonar is really giving tough time to plan over here when it comes to sharpness but we are talking about F11 that's where uh, the quality of the planner uh, and Carl's eyes are, you know, at maximum when it comes to sharpness. Alright. Okay. So on the left hand side, again, it's planner. Uh, uh, what I did, I basically uh, tried to uh, put out of focus in order to see the bokeh. Uh, as you can see, the bokeh on the uh, planner is much more rounder because of more because of 11 aperture blades and whereas uh, in uh, Carl Zeiss it's uh, eight, I believe 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9, nine aperture blades so it's more uh, kind of a sidey there it's supposed to be more edges on the uh, APO sonar but uh, the plan is more round even at f11 so here advantage goes to uh, planner all right so in this example on the left hand side uh, this is a uh, planner 135 1.8 at f 1.8 and on the right hand side uh, I put uh, Carl Zeiss and Pio Sonar at f2 the whole idea is to see the contrast directly shooting into the Sun and the sharpness how much edgy uh, the, uh, the images and as you can see both are you know providing great contrast uh, and uh, sharpness across the board really so if I go this is at both uh, you know both lenses are wide open uh, and now I'm going to you know narrow it down to f11 on the left hand side is planner at f11 on the right hand side is APU sonar at f11 and uh, now you start seeing background uh, with the sharpness and everything the contrast is uh, is very much uh, off of, of course the vignetting which was present in the uh, at the APO sonar was is now completely gone um, but uh, you can see uh, um, you know the very bright corner no vignetting whatsoever but if you notice the background of planner which is this power grid even at f11 both lenses are f11 but the background rendition of plana is much more out of focus much more blur than the apo sonar which you will see across all the images that's the uh, i believe that's the lens design factor of all the z lenses because i see this i notice the same characteristic at one point f 51.2 85 1.2 and other you know uh, z lenses so that being said, let's move to the next image. And on the right hand side is this. Okay, so on the left hand side is uh, Carl Zeitz. Uh, and on the right hand side is Plana this time. And uh, if you can see, is much more contrasty both are wide open really wide open and the background rendition like I said earlier on plana is much more out of focus much more blurry than the Carl's eyes 
and the sharpness uh, here the this uh, planner appears to be more sharper over here even though and much more contrasty okay next uh, on the left hand side is planner at f2 and on the right hand side is carl zeiss apu sonar at f2 i tried to put the same framing i put the focus on this on uh, green vegetation in order to see and if you can see they are nearly identical again of course the vignetting was there on the Carl Zeiss, which you can see over here, the corner of the planner is much more brighter than the Carl Zeiss. But uh, the overall, the planner over here is supposed to be sharper in this part than uh, Carl Zeiss. Maybe because of the Carl Zeiss does not appear brighter because of the vignetting. But uh, if you look at again the same autofocus area on plan is much more than the uh, they are much more than the Carl Zeiss. But the Carl Zeiss images are much more contrasty if you can see clearly in compared to the planner. Alright, so in next example. Alright. Okay, on the left hand side is planner, on the right hand side is APO sonar and uh, Again, plan appears to be sharp over here. But the contrast on the on the APO sonar is much more than the planner. Alright, the next image. On the left hand side again it's uh, planner on the right hand side uh, it's uh, apu sonar both are at f2 it very much clear that uh, carl zeiss is very contrasty producing very contrasty images with the heavy vignetting at the corner uh, whereas the planner is much more neutral bright image and uh, very less vignetting in compared to planner but when it comes to sharpness this is where I was struggling with the Carl Zeiss because the Carl Zeiss is manual focus lens whereas Plana is autofocus. So obviously there is some room of margin when it comes to locking the focus because in this in this uh, in this part the focus appears to be more over here than uh, uh, the over here uh, on the planner. So that was it. Anyway, so let's move on to the next example okay all right so here actually these are four images okay yep so on the left hand side is planner at f2 on the right hand side is carl zeiss at f2 and uh, the whole idea is to share the sharpness at f2 uh, and if you can see, both are really, really sharp at F2. It's uh, surprising. And now let's move to F4. Now both are at F4. And uh, I'll start you seeing. Uh, and the sharpness in the image is getting more brighter and uh, more uh, punchier, more contrasty on the Zeiss end. But the planner is much more producing neutral color. Uh, so this is at F8. And now both are at F8. And F8, you see this starburst over here on the Zeiss. APU sonar and this is the starburst of uh, uh, the planner. The planner has more uh, these edges because it having 11 blades and compared to 9 blades. So that's why. Now at uh, both are at F16 and they are nearly equal when it comes to uh, this uh, 
f11 and f16 both are nearly equal so i don't see any difference uh, logically speaking but <clears throat> this next one it's really interesting when it comes to bokeh because this is where everybody wants to know okay how the bokeh balls are and the xi is producing cat's eye bokeh especially at the edges whereas uh, plana circular bokeh across you know very very less uh, you know a cat's eye bokeh actually there is no virtually um, there is no cat's eye bokeh even at the edges whereas Carl's eyes you see over here cat's eye bokeh on the apio sonar see this this part and this part clear difference and the advantage here goes to plana on the left hand side the size is on the right hand side uh, right and so next okay uh, both are at f9 can you tell the difference i mean seriously other than in this part the board moved that's why it appears to be blurry but look at over here look at this part and this part this part this part same same no difference Let, there is virtually no difference uh, from f8 onwards I see no difference at all on the right hand side is plana on the left hand side is Zeiss APU sonar surprisingly all right so on the left hand side is plana on the right hand side is uh, Talzai's APU sonar both are at f9 i I'll see at f8 and f9 the results are nearly identical nearly identical i i i see no difference really no difference on the left hand side is plan on the right hand side is apu sonar so on the left hand side there's plana and the right hand side is apu sonar let's focus over here you see it's at f8 f9 this they are nearly identical i see no difference but there is a little micro contrast in the leaves over here you can see you can easily distinguish the individual leaves on this plant in the plana which is not much visible on the right hand side uh, at apio sonar so this is where there is a edge on planner that you can get even over here in this part in this part the micro contrast the sharpness you know if you have a high resolution camera this is where you will get advantage when you are going to use planner which you won't get on APU sonar. APU sonar is sharp, really sharp. But when it comes to high resolution camera, that's that's where uh, <coughs> uh, Plana will give you edge over uh, APU sonar. Clearly. Besides, when it's wide open, you know, and there's a, of course Plana wins. But when it comes to narrowing down F8 onwards, they are very close to each other very very close to each other i see no difference actually to be very honest all right so again on the left hand side is plan on the right hand side it's apo sonar and as you can see look at this sign on the pla on the apo sonar it's much more kind of a visible but on plana it's blown away like you can't see anything still on the right hand side you can see some kind of number but on the left hand side it's not visible yeah, both are at f2 both are at f2 uh, <clears throat> same thing the uh, plana is rendering much more blur a uh, background uh, in compared to size even at the same aperture 
so that's i believe that belongs to the lens design okay so on the left hand side it's apo sonar this time and on the right hand side we have planner and again you can clearly see these eyes producing heavy vignetting at the corner which is not present on planner that advantage straight away goes to planner uh when it comes to uh the rendition and the sharpness it's the the size apu sonar is very close to planner but planner having auto focus you know so straight away advantage goes to planner but if you are trying to save money and you can do manual focus uh, as per you know by taking your time then of course size uh, 135f2 apu sonar is a very good conductor but overall i see that the uh, carl zeiss 135f1.8 as planner is having quite a bit advantage over uh, carl zeiss 135f2 apu sonar so throughout this uh, uh, sample images as you saw uh, from f8 onwards the advantage uh, you know between the difference of performance between plana and the zeiss is not much of a difference they are nearly identical to each other especially f8 onwards uh, <clears throat> but and the our background out of focus area of uh, uh plana is much more than uh, zeiss even at f8 or f9 or f11 because that i believe that's because of the lens design but the sharpness across the edges is nearly identical uh which is really is you know surprising for me but uh, that's how it is so that's why i put uh, these both lenses side by side and try to uh, make uh, uh, the results out Uh, as much as identical as i can and i believe uh, uh, you see the results over here uh, the difference is uh, quite obvious um, the planner is having edge uh, especially when it comes to uh, vignetting when it comes to the image rendition is much more cooler than in compared to carl zeiss which is much more warmer but the overall sharpness Uh, when it comes to sharpness and image quality the carl zeiss 135 f2 apu sonar really gave tough time to 130 nikon 135 f 1.8 1.8 s planner the zeiss apu sonar really gave tough time to planner so that's it uh look okay. so that's my side by side comparison let's get back to the final conclusion thank you so you saw the result right and uh, the plan of always are ahead of sonar in so many ways in so many ways so it really really helping uh, a lot uh, in so many ways the image quality the performance and everything uh, i'm going to wrap up this video now um, with this note that if you are if you are like uh, uh, if you want to use a special lens or a special character then go with this lens because the amount of depth the amount of separation that you will get from this lens is unparalleled with so much clarity with so much perfectly contrast and colors across the board the sharpness across the board that you will get from this lens is unparalleled that you will not find even in canon 135 f2 l lens i can guarantee you that because i already been through the results of canon 135 f2 l lens versus sonar and sonar wins that by miles this plana is ahead than sonar so that canon is out of the picture the samyang is out of the picture and sony and sigma they are all out of the picture because so now already beat them all of them by miles you can go and google all you want plan already bet you know already beat this so now so winner yep we have a winner here so that's it that's my all overall feeling about this video about uh, this lens um uh, i hope i'm justifying 
the, the quality of this lens based on the sample images that I showed you and all that. Uh, I hope you like it and I'll see you guys in future with some new content. Till then, take care.